Hello and welcome to the Voice of Life. This is Roger Hutchins and Cheryl Hutchins, and we are here today believing with you. What do you mean? I'm, I mean that, that if you've been uh, wanting to hear from God, wanting to know what God's purpose and plan is for your life, we're teaching about the inward witness, the inward voice that God has placed within us, which came, came in a form of Holy Spirit uh, God has taken up his abode in us and we know that God is wanting to do mighty things in this day, in this time, in, in this hour right now in which we live in. We thank God for what he's done in the past. We thank God for what he did in the early church. But I believe and God spoke to me and said uh, that my people need to use what I put in them to use and that he's going to there's going to be a mighty move of god and those that have positioned themselves those that have uh, come in alignment with the holy spirit within them that god will use us in a mighty way so uh today i want you uh when we pray we're getting ready to pray as we open the the broadcast and we want to pray for you maybe you're not born again uh, it's important that you are born again, that you give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Why? There are benefits to what we are teaching about the kingdom of God, and you want to be available for God to impart those benefits to you. Um, because Jesus told Nicodemus to, to see the kingdom of God or to understand the kingdom of God and to enter into the kingdom of God, you must be born again. There are a available benefits to the king uh, as we go along in the, in these lessons and in the ones to come in uh, in the uh, near future uh, broadcast we're going to be sharing those things with you because we believe god wants you to be the head and not the tail above and not beneath and uh, i'll tell you all about that we're going to talk about it as we teach the word of god but first of all, let's pray you accept the Lord Jesus if you haven't already. If you're sitting uh, here, if you're opening up these uh, lessons and you uh, you need healing, you need a touch in your body, you need uh, peace in your mind, we believe while we pray, God's going to give it to you because God sent you to this broadcast today and you're going to begin to be blessed in a mighty, mighty way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you said if you be lifted up you draw all men unto you and lord as you are drawing as you are dealing excuse me i think that uh, and i feel that you are touching men's hearts today and that you can uh, draw them to you now just ask the lord just, just father come into my heart i believe on the lord jesus christ confess him with your mouth and then you will be saved and according to the word of god you're born again you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So uh, now we've been talking about that voice within. We've been talking about when God gave us, imparted to us the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Ghost, that uh, now there is a voice within, an inner voice within that communicates by the Spirit. Uh, the natural man can't understand it. So we need to be... Uh, we need to be in the area of the spirit man because the spirit man communicates with the spirit of God just like Adam walked in the cool of the day in the garden uh, I, I believe that, that the spirit man once we're born again walks with God not in a physical garden I mean we're all, we're all in a physical body but, uh, but God communes with us in our spirit this deep calling to the deep so we are people, we are spirit people uh, that have a soul and we live in a body, but thank God there's a voice within. We can talk with God. Now, I know people think you're crazy when you start talking about talking to God, but, uh, but you know, we can. And, and, and guess what? Whether you believe it or not, God talks back. Now, sometimes he's, he's, he's quiet when I don't want him to be quiet, but, but, but God does talk back. God, God does communicate. And as a prophet of God, I experience the communication of God. And you don't have to be a prophet of God. Uh, how can I say that? For you to hear God's voice, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. So if you are saved, born again, if you're a child of God, 
then you're considered the sheep of God, the, the sheep of the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And now you can hear the voice of God. You will not follow a stranger because you're seeking for the voice of the shepherd. All right, so uh, there is a voice within for every one of us. I want to go now, uh, anything before we go into the lesson? Well, I just wanted to say that Jesus walked the same way. If you remember, um, and Amen. you know the scriptures, um, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, the Spirit descended on him like a dove, the scripture says. Amen. But then there's numerous scriptures where Jesus, we did it a couple lessons ago, Jesus said, my Father and I are one. There's scriptures that say, I only say what the Father says, and I only do what I see the Father doing. So he walked this same way that we're talking about and teaching about. Amen. So uh, we, we want to continue uh, on our previous, on lesson 11 uh, of the, the, the witness within, we talked about the woman with the issue of blood and how that she said within herself uh, that her healing didn't come from, from an outward source. It didn't even come from uh, laying on of hands. It came uh, when she said within herself, her faith said, if I can but touch his, uh, his clothes, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, um, and then within Jesus, virtue come. Well, continuing on that thought, I want to go to Luke the sixth chapter, and because we we need to see, we talked a little bit about uh, being every whit whole, not just being uh, healed for the moment, not just being uh, healing over. Uh, and I talked about how the the splinter in in my hand would would heal over, but then eventually it would fester back up. It would become infected again until I actually got the splinter out. This is the same thing. If there's things in our spirit, in our uh, in, in, that we go through torment of mind and all these things that uh, that that vex us, that do, and, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But uh, then it's hard for us to maintain and keep uh, our healing. Somebody said, "Well, I, why did I lose my healing?" Because uh, I've seen people that I knew got touched and healed, uh, but yet the next time you see them, they're back in the same place. Well, there's a couple of things that, 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 that can cause that. Either there's a benefit to them uh, that they feel there's a benefit for them being uh, sick. I, I had one man tell me in a prayer line one time he didn't want uh, God to heal his back because they'd take his disability check. Uh, you know, and, and you know, he wanted his disability check more than he wanted his healing. Um, and then, you know, the unforgiveness or disobedience. But let's go to Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. Uh, and he came down with them and stood in, in the plain and the company of his and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people uh, out of Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and, and to be healed of their diseases. Remember, uh, we said in the previous lesson that it's disease, disease in our spirit, disease within our soulish realm uh, that, that causes us to be uh, open, to be susceptible, if you will, uh, to uh, disease in our body. Uh, that That's an outward manifestation of an inward condition. So we've got to deal with the inward man, the, the voice that is put inwardly on purpose, because if we can get the inward man uh, walking in peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, then we're living in another kingdom. The kingdoms of this world are going to bring us always to disappointment, to uh, not being in peace. Read, read verse 18 with me. Uh, and they that were vexed with unclean spirits, say vexed. Vex. That means there was something, there was a vexing, there was something inside of them uh, that was, uh, what, what was it, Cheryl? Gnawing uh, at them or eating. You know, something, something there that it was constantly uh, condemning them, constantly tormenting them, constantly uh, causing dis-ease in their inward man. Uh, they, were, they were vexed with unclean spirits, 
uh, and they were healed. Now, thank God, God just doesn't heal uh, physical, but God can remove the the thing that's there that's causing the physical to be under uh, oppression, to be uh, de depressed. Uh, verse 19 says, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, and they went, uh, and for they there went virtue or life out of him and healed them all. Now, I, I think that is a, 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 a outstanding that, that virtue went out of him. These people that were tormented, uh, you know, I can see that. I, the, the scripture talk, calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. And what these people needed, a whole multitude of people that were vexed, I don't know what made it, what brought them to that point. I don't know why they, maybe their culture, maybe some kind of uh, witchcraft or something going on. I don't know what was vexing them, but I do know when the Prince of Peace showed up, glory to God, uh, that that he healed them all. He, he cast the devil out of them if they needed uh, uh, the devil cast of them or he just breathed peace and they began to uh, worship God. Uh, if, if you read on, uh, then you'll find uh, after that he he lifted up his eyes to his disciples and he began to teach what we commonly call uh, the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes uh, because once he did that, that sure that's why I, whenever we come on this broadcast, I want you to experience the touch of God and be born again because uh, these people couldn't hear a, a sermon on the mount. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't hear what he was saying because they were vexed, they were tormented. Uh, but Jesus healed them all uh, and then he began to preach, he began to teach. And so that's the posture. Uh, it, it, you know, many times... Uh, we gather together as the body of Christ. We gather together and and people that are vexed, people that are tormented, people that are not free uh, can't hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That's why God wants to bring us uh, to that place of healing and that, that place of the torments, the vexing, uh, all that, that Cheryl said it like this is a gnawing. It's something there that's just continually gnawing at you, God, condemning you. But thanks be to God that Jesus comes and heals all our diseases and he speaks peace into our spirit. I just want to say to anybody who is feeling this gnawing or the vexing or the harassing inside, the the. It really is a tor torment. Yeah, um, I've experienced that. Most everybody has. But if you will just get quiet, Amen. if you will just get quiet and listen and um, let God just, it's like it goes back to the splinter. Sometimes things are so deep inside of us yeah. The scripture talks about the word of God being like a sword. And it says that sword is very sharp and it's quick and powerful. But it goes in and it divides asunder the soul and spirit. See, it's the soul man that's being saved and that's what has to be healed first because we started Amen. this whole series with uh, first... or. 3 John 2, that um, it's God's will that we prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. So we've got to get Amen. that soul open and healed first so physical healings can take place. And, um, you know, some of you have had a lot of ugly words said to you, um, extremely hurtful words, but you got to let go of all of that. Forgiveness has to flow. There will never, ever, ever, ever be a healing, a genuine healing, unless forgiveness flows. And just realize, I remember when I was back in college in the late 60s, um, I took a psychology class. The only thing I can remember out of the class is this, and from that time to this day, I've never forgotten it, and I think about it often. 
And the professor said, remember that everyone has something in their life that you don't know about. Yeah. Everybody's been hurt. Everybody has suffered. So just remember that the people that hurt you, they had something that hurt them. The saying is hurting people hurt people, and that's just the truth. But don't be one of the hurting people that hurt somebody else. This scripture is talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who has the power to heal, to remove that thing or things from your soul, to bring that peace within. I'm telling you, it will transform your life. Amen. There's no, no, no life at all apart from Jesus Christ, and you will never, ever be disappointed if you truly have an encounter with Jesus Christ and you read the word and believe it, he'll never disappoint you. Amen. You know, Joel, it's so many times we go through life and we don't deal with things. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, this is the second day we've talked about uh, about this, but but I really feel it's, it's the hand of God because uh, there are people that, that that will be watching that really need a touch from God to just change their inner, uh, the, the feelings on the inside. The only way to do that is to, for that relationship with God. And God has given us, uh, God's given us uh, that spirit, the Holy Ghost, but the scripture also says he's not given us the spirit of fear but he's given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. What God wants to do is replace all that vexing and all that torment uh, that you may have been going through. And maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody you know, but we agree, agree with us today and we believe God is going to deliver some folk of that vexing, of that torment. But knowing this, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear uh, actually negates faith. But I want to tell you what, God is declaring you to be a person of faith and God is declaring, well, whenever Jesus came amongst this multitude, he come ready to release the virtue or the life out of him, the peace out of him that would heal not just one person like that woman with the issue of blood, but he came ready to release that virtue. And that's we're right here to, today, Cheryl, knowing that however, how many uh, hear this broadcast and ever how many uh, will just say, that, that's me, God. I want peace from the vexing. I want peace from the torment. And God will heal you. Jesus' virtue is still in the earth today. And I feel it being released to, to somebody today that you can come into a place that you're everywhere whole and the power of God is bringing you into a lifestyle now, not just a one time, oh, I went to church and it was so good and I felt good, but then you wake up the next day and there, there the devil is again, there the torment is again. You know, you've got the power now to turn around and open your mouth and say, get behind me, Satan. Uh, you know what happened? I've been delivered from that. The life of God, the, the, the virtue of Jesus Christ himself came and healed me and you get behind me because I am every whit whole. Hallelujah. Um, when Roger was speaking, I thought of the scripture in 1 John, I believe it's chapter 4 or 5, somewhere around there, and it says that perfect love casteth out fear. Amen. And what happens when we have hurtful things done to us, that's a lack of love on the part of someone, or when we do it to someone else. Yeah. It's a lack of love, and many, many lessons it's been expressed that God is love. That's who he is. So, and he's that perfect love. Amen. Let his perfect love heal you. Let go of that. Let go of all of it. It's not going to benefit you. Look at your life. Has being annoyed with people and angry with people, has it benefited you in any way? No. If you're honest, it has Amen. not. 
But let that perfect love cast out the fear of being hurt again, the fear that somebody else will do something, or even the fear that you will do it yourself. Yeah. So just let go of all of that. Let God's perfect love wash over you and cleanse you and heal you. This is something you receive by faith. You believe what's being taught, what the Word of God says, and you receive it by faith. I'm telling you, you will see a change in your life. Amen. You will. Amen. Now, one, one thing, you know, that we, I want us to realize, and the Lord just unctioned me to, to uh, come back and bring, bring it back into the ver, very purpose is that He's put tools in our life. Uh, you know, some of you have felt a touch of God while we've been ministering uh, on these lessons and while we've been talking about them. Uh, and now what God wants to do is let that same anointing that has delivered and helped you begin to take you into a, a place where you are uh, letting that flow through you. Jesus, you know, you don't have to be called to a pulpit ministry. In fact, the, the pulpit ministry, I think, reaches a very small uh, segment uh, of the popula population. I think, uh, in fact, even whenever we look at the uh, fivefold ministry, the Ascension Gift Ministries in Ephesians 4.11, uh, it, the purpose in those ministries, those uh, pulpit ministries, <clears throat> is to train the, the body of Christ uh, for the work of the ministry and for the perfecting of the saints. So now the work of the ministry actually is in the fields. It's actually out, out there rather than just uh, in the pulpit. Thank God for those times whenever we can come together around the Word of God, around the teaching and the pulpit. But you have been chosen and called for a purpose. We're, gonna, we're getting ready to talk about that. Uh, but I want to make sure that you take a hold of anything. If, if there's anything, uh, any residue of un, unrest, any residue of of anything that's not peace working in you that would hinder you from moving into that place that you can be effective in the ministry the Lord uh, has placed on the body of Christ. Now, some people say, well, I'm not called to do that. Well, sometimes we, whether we're called or not, if we can just make ourselves available, God can use us. You know, if we can just make ourselves uh, available what God wants he can use us and he can touch other people I believe God all over the world the Spirit of God is moving all over the world uh, God desires to have a people uh, for his namesake and for his purpose amen now uh, to do that I want I want you and me we, 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 we prayed already we're gonna pray again in, in a minute uh, as we when we close the broadcast but I want us to begin to prepare uh, mark down on our next lesson. We're going to come back into 1 Peter. In fact, we'll go ahead and start it now. But in 1 Peter, uh, the second chapter, uh, Peter began to bring us to a, 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 an awareness of our identity in Christ. And he says, But ye are a chosen, this is verse 9 of second, uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter. He says, but you are a chosen generation. Are you listening? You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And he just told us who we are, how God looks at us. We're a chosen generation. Now, that, that crosses what we call generations. We look, and we talked a little bit uh, in a previous lesson about uh, the... the um, the generations about where Cheryl and I are in what's called the baby boomer generation. Then there's the millennium generation. There's generation X and, and so forth. And everybody tries to put us in a box. But he says, there, there, and God spoke to me in, uh, in uh, Huntsville, Alabama not long ago when I spoke at a graduation and said, there's only one generation that I recognize. That's right. What generation is that? Ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises. Now, I want you to hear that because the Lord has made me know that, that we as the body of Christ are not doing this to the level that we were intended to do that. 
First of all, out of the realization that we are a chosen generation, out of the realization that we are a royal priesthood, how could we not be? We are children of the King of Kings. See, and out of, the, out of that realization, uh, He wants to show forth through us that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you. You, you. Every one of us have a calling. What is that calling? Out of darkness. Hallelujah. You've been called of God out of darkness into His marvelous light. So now you and I as the children of God are, are to walk in that and to show forth. That means there's something out of what God's done for us. Now we show forth the praises uh, of God. And I believe that you and I can do that. We can lift up our voices and praise God, but we also can praise Him with our lifestyle. You know, so many want their lifestyle to go back into to look look like what it used to look like before you were called out of darkness. But you are children of the day. You're children. Uh, you're not children of the night. You're children of the day. So now rise and begin to let uh, the praises of God show forth out of you that you can demonstrate, that you can manifest out of you the praises of God. Any closing words? No, I don't think so. All right, we're going to go ahead and pray today. And, uh, you know, I just sense God touching somebody. Uh, I want you to re realize that. You are a chosen generation. God chose you. How awesome is that? That God chose you and me to be part of his body, to be part of that royal priesthood. Uh, you're a holy holy nation of peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness somebody say out of out of out of he out didn't call of. you to stay yes. in right. darkness he called you out of darkness so thank god he's not only called you that he empowered you to do that see so he qualified you and now we can walk forward as the children of the living God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today as we close this broadcast. You just minister your anointing, your power, your spirit unto every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of our voice. God, I thank you, Lord, for ears to hear. God, anybody that's, that's having a little trouble understanding or hearing of what you're saying to us today concerning the inward voice, uh, the inward witness, God, I ask you in Jesus' name that you just anoint their ears to hear their eyes with eye salve. And Father, let each and every one of us grow in the spirit and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the program today. Uh, we will be back. That was Lesson 12, and we're going to be coming back into Lesson 13. Uh, we are excited about what God is saying and doing, and God is empowering you. Don't sit back and be in the corner. You rise up and be part of the body of Christ and let God move and work through you. And you'd be surprised, just a little seed planted from what you say and what you do, realizing you're a royal priesthood and you're showing forth the praises of God can make a difference in somebody's life. Love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.